a new recording and march right on. I told you at the end of, sort of towards the end of class Thursday, that systems of linear equations, vector equations, and matrix equations are basically three different ways of discussing the same thing. Like if you have a system, x plus y equals zero, x minus y equals zero. That's the same as having x times the vector one, one, plus y times the vector one, negative one, equals the zero vector. And that's the same as having the matrix one, 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 negative one times the vector xy equals the zero vector. So we just talked about homogeneous systems of linear equations, but we could also talk about homogeneous vector equations, or we could talk about homogeneous matrix equations. It just depends on what's most convenient for the problem that you are looking at. And that observation is perhaps going to make the um, definition I'm about to put on the board seem a little less like it comes out of nowhere. We are going to define linear dependence. And this seemingly kind of nothing definition is actually going to be one of the most definition, important definitions in this course. We're going to use it for the rest of the semester. A set of vectors. V1, V2, up to Vn is called linearly ah, spelling linearly. Dependent if the homogeneous vector equation C one V one plus C two V two plus up to Cn Vn equals the zero vector. It's called linear the dependent if this homogeneous vector equation has non trivial. solutions. And once you've defined linear dependence, the idea of linear independence is maybe pretty immediate. 
if a set of vectors is not dependent, it must be independent. And as I say, this definition, or especially this sister definition, the definition of linear independence, is one of the most um, important definitions in this class. I would go so far as to say in mathematics. Once again, I won't dwell on this because you didn't all take differential equations, but to solve these differential equations, we had a definition of linear independence, and we needed to find linearly independent solutions. We're not going to see the power of this definition for a while, though. Let me just briefly outline the intuition behind it. Briefly and informally. Say that vectors are being used to store information. So vectors do store information. They store directions and they store length. If a set of vectors is being used to store info, then if the set is dependent, then this set has redundant information. The same information is being um, expressed more than once. And you could delete vectors and still store the same info. On the other hand, if the set of vectors is independent, then deleting any vector also deletes information. So that's our intuition behind why we care about dependence and independence. We want to eliminate redundant information and just look at the least amount of data we can look at for the information we're trying to store. All this will come later. Um, the next example we should do is probably just deciding whether a set of vectors is dependent or independent. That's probably going to take more than seven minutes. So I'll just call the lecture here and we'll pick right back up with that on Thursday. Um, so you're now in a position to complete the next homework assignment. That must be 1.4, 1.5, 1.5. And we're in 1.6 now, and we'll finish it, and then hopefully another section on Thursday. And I will see you then. Have a